Thanks, everybody. Please be seated. And Attorney Raymond, the next witness, please. Please send us help Curtis Van Pelt to the stand. Sir, if you believe you can do so responsibly and safely, removing your mask would be appreciated at this point. All right. Thank you very much. Go right ahead. Sure. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name for the record and spell both your first and last name? Yeah, my name is Curtis Van Pelt, C-U-R-T-I-S, V-A-N space capital P-E-L-T. How are you employed? I'm a, a facility manager for Zimbrick Inc. Did you know a, a person by the name of Krista Halderson? Yes, I did. How did you know Krista? Uh, Krista was my one of my direct reports. She was our customer service representative. We had her under my employment for a little over two years. Okay. Um, could you just very briefly in a sentence or two tell me about what Krista was like at work? Krista was a very kind, warm customer service representative. She had a genuine concern for all of our customers on the phone and in person, treated everyone with empathy, and I had many compliments from the general public. Anyone who dealt with her went out of their way to tell me how great she was. Now, going into this, we said, didn't we, that unlike the other stuff that we've done, we did, didn't did do much research on this because we wanted to kind of absorb it yeah. as it went. But what research we did do, we couldn't find, you know, anyone who had a bad word to say about either Bart or Krista, could we? No, everyone really liked them. Yeah. By all accounts, they were very popular and... You know, what he did to them was not only horrific, it was a huge loss to a lot of people, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. First exhibit is Exhibit 30. Could you please look at Exhibit 30 and identify it? Yeah, this is the time punches uh, submitted by Krista in our uh, management system. And where is... Uh, the physical location of your office where Krista worked? My office is in the front. It's a glassed three panel cubicle. It is about 12 to 15 feet from the main office where Krista and the estimators resided. Sorry, I asked a poor question. <laughs> what is the, the address as in the street address? I knew what she meant, but when he started going on about the location of his office, I was like, hang on, pal, come back, come back, <laughs> join the rest of us. Uh, street address is 1707 North Stoughton Road. In Madison? In Madison. Um, and does this appear to be a true and accurate copy of her time-in, time-out sheet? Yes, I gave that copy to the, tech, uh, to the detectives that were there. Okay. I would move Exhibit 30 into evidence at this time. No objection. It is received. And I assume you do not have work times for all your employees memorized. No, I don't. That's why we have the computer. Hello, computer. So I'm going to give this Exhibit 30 to you. Can you tell me what hours Krista worked on July 1st, 2021? So Krista punched in at 7.41 a.m. on July 1st. She, you just want me to tell you when she worked too? You, she took a lunch, I assume. She took a lunch break, 1.13 p.m. to 1.39 p.m. And then she did clock out at 4.58 p.m. Speaking of the lunch break, um, was there any locations that people would go to to get food during the lunch hour that you're aware of near your work? Well, there's many places because East Town is around the corner from us. Um, there is a quick trip right next door. So some folks go and get sandwiches and heat them up in our break room. Um, so there's a multitude of places nearby that someone could go eat off site. 
And I'm gonna show you what has been marked as Exhibit 541. Could you please identify what Exhibit 541 is? Yes, uh, this was all of Krista's time off requests from uh, January 1st of 2020 through December 31st, 2021. Did Krista Halderson request to be off on July 2nd of 2021? No, she did not. Did she show up to work that day? No, she did not. Was that unusual for Ms. Mrs. Halderson? Extremely unusual. Krista was very conscientious and would text me usually a couple hours ahead of any start time to let me know she would be late or not in that day. And did Mrs. Halderson ask off for July 5th of 2021? No, she did not. I had that day off. You've got to wonder what was going through Curtis's mind that weekend because, you know, she didn't show up the next day for work. Um, which was the Friday, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and then they had the weekend, and then Monday was his day off, and she didn't show up then. So over the weekend, he's thinking, well, it's pretty weird that she didn't show up and she didn't let me know, but it's not serious enough for him to be overly concerned. He probably, he probably put it down to a family emergency and he'd find out on Monday, you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he could have, because... Anything can happen in life, you know. Her turning, her not turning in is, is so ambiguous that, you know, he'd think it's unusual but not really question it. He'd probably think, well, she'll probably come in on Monday and have an explanation for it. Yeah, because she's always got an explanation. Yeah. Cause she's off. But little did he know, eh? Yeah. Such a shame. And you had that day on. Part of our process in our front office is that only one of us can have a day off. We can't have two people taking the same days off. So Dan Croninger took Friday, um, July 2nd off. I took Monday, July 5th off. And that would exclude anyone else from taking time off in the front office. Did Krista show up for work, if you know, on July 5th? No, she did not. It was my day off. I was concerned that she hadn't shown up on the Friday before I went into work to see if she had come to work and if anyone had heard from her, even though it was my day off. But again, no call, no show that day? No call, no show. I texted her a little before nine o'clock when it was apparent that she hadn't shown up. Um, that text was never delivered. And uh, did Mrs. Halderson have any time in July of 2021 requested off? Yes, she did, near the end of the month. Yep. Uh, page five um, on the bottom of this document, um, she submitted time off for uh, July 27th and July 28th. Is there any rules at your work about how far in advance you have to ask for days off? No, it's encouraged that employees ask as soon as possible, if that as far in advance as they know. I usually submit my stuff in January for the upcoming year, which might be July or August. Um, it's first come, first serve, so that the sooner you get it in, you've locked in that week or the block of days you want off, and th then it's precluded from someone else um, you know, having a conflict and trying to take the same time off. I would move Exhibit 541 into evidence at this time. Any objection? No objection. It is received. Do you think that Chandler conceived that there would be questions like, outlying questions like this, lingering about their disappearance? I don't think he thought that far ahead. Such as her lack of notification to her employers to say, I'm going to be taking this weekend off. I mean, they both seem like very organized, responsible people. You know, it would be highly irresponsible of, of her to do that to her employer, just swan off to a cabin and just not, not tell anyone. Yeah, and not even return his calls or texts. So this is where his plan is falling to bits, you know. he If he'd have done it, when they were, if they were scheduled to go away somewhere, and if he'd have done it then, at least he would have had an alibi. They've gone, you know. 
Yeah, and it would have shown that they booked that time off. Yeah, but he didn't have time for that. He no, had he didn't. A few, you know, well, about what forty-five minutes to decide what to do before he actually did it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so. <sighs> Do you know what vehicle Krista Halderson drove to and from work on July 1st, 2021? She drives the, uh, or drove the Volvo, the gray Volvo station wagon. No further questions. Cross-examination, please. Briefly, yes. Mr. Van Pelt, it sounds like you're essentially, or were essentially, Ms. Halderson's supervisor. Is that fair? Correct. Um, as her supervisor, or maybe just in general, would you consider yourself close to Ms. Halderson? She was a great employee, and I considered her a friend. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. May this witness be excused and released? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good remainder of your day. You too. Thank you. What the bloody hell does how close their relationship is as employer, employee, or friends, or whatever, what does that have to do with the price of caviar in Tasmania? <laughs> what, what, what? I don't know. I think what they're mainly asking is um, they're kind of letting the jury know that it's out of character for them. Yeah, but that was the defence. Well, I don't... I'm sure we'll find out. I don't know what, you know, whether them asking that question, they'll insinuate something later on in the trial, but that was just a bit, you know, nonsensical. Just weird question to ask, wasn't it? State calls Daniel Croinger to the stand. Go right up to Randy there. Please raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give in this matter? Judge? No, sure. It's fine. I know who it is. It's fine. Okay. Uh, sir, if you are able to safely and responsibly testify without your mask, it would be appreciated if you could. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I apologize. I think I said we were going to call Daniel Croninger, but it's John Polnett that's I've that we've actually called. My victim witness person was right. So okay. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, sir, could you please state your name and spell both your first and last for the record? John Painelt, J-O-H-N, and then P-O-E-H-N-E-L-T. How are you employed? I'm the store leader at Quick Trip. Uh, which Quick Trip? Store 955 over on 1625 North Stoughton. And earlier this, or I'm sorry, in this, this summer, did you provide some footage from your store to the Dane County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Um, and it, we showed you a, a piece of this footage in the past. Is that fair to say? Yes. Ah, I wonder if this is the footage of Chandler buying the ice. Could be. Let's see. Yeah. And that was true and accurate footage, the footage you provided to Dane County Sheriff's Office? Yes, it was. Um, at this time, I would move Exhibit 31, the Quick Trip video, into evidence. No Any objection. objection? Thank you. It may be received and it may be published. And the first clip we're going to play is camera 22. 
Um, and I believe that's the camera over the north door. Is that correct, sir? Uh, the camera from the uh, north side doors? I believe so. Yes. Okay. And we are going to play from one minute and 17 seconds, and we're just going to play a couple seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to play 1.17 p.m. Um, until 1.18 p.m. Thank you. And sir, just one further question. Um, is there a Zimbrook dealership near your quick trip store? Yes, about 200 yards away. Uh, no further questions. Cross-examination? No, thank you. May this witness be excused and released? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good rest of your day. If you remember, we experienced this during the early part of the Jody Aries trial. Do you remember witnesses going on and off the stand like a conveyor belt? Yeah. This was just so that certain, you know, videos, uh, sound recordings, writings, text messages, whatever, could be submitted into evidence. Um, there's always the, the possibility of calling them back, depending on, you know, how they leave things, but... Yeah, certain witnesses. Yeah, but this is just to establish evidence, really. Actually, Your Honor, can I ask one more question? Oh, yeah. I apologize. Sure. Is the time and date on this video is July 1st of 2021? Yes. And the time is once it was 1.17 p.m. and went into 1.18 p.m.? That's correct. And is the time on the video um, accurate to time in real life? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any Sorry follow up that. to that? No, thank you. Thank you again, sir. Have a good remainder of your day. If you're thinking your computer's unplugged something, that sound fooled me as well. I've just spent 20 minutes checking the bloody computer, haven't I? Nothing's wrong. <laughs> That's on the bloody video, bastards. <laughs> Do you know who I thought of for a second then when I saw him? Who? Bane. Yeah, I can see what you mean. No, Mr. Wayne. Then I will allow you to die. Sir, if you are willing and able to safely and responsibly testify without your mask, that would be our preference. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, no, it's not Bane, is it? Good afternoon. Could you please state your name for the record and spell both your first and last name? Yes, Daniel Joseph Kroninger, D-A-N-I-E-L-K-R-O-N-I-N-G-E-R. -E -E How are you employed? Uh, currently, I am an electrician apprentice. Oh, I'm sorry. That was, uh, how were you employed in July of 2021? Oh, at that time, I was a body shop estimator at a Zimbrick Body Shop European. 
And is that the location on Stoughton Road? Yes. In Madison, correct. Dane County, Wisconsin? Yes. Did you know a coworker by the name of Krista Halderson? Yes, I did. Can you describe what was your relationship with Krista? Uh, she was our customer service rep. Um, so we worked together. Uh, I think I started there in September of 2019. Okay. And did you become friends with Krista Halderson? Yes, I did. Um, did you ever go to her home? Yes. Um, did you meet her husband? Yes. Okay. Sometime, did you find out on July 2nd of 2021 that Krista no-called and no-showed into work? Yes, that's correct. How did you find that out? Uh, I had the day off from work. We were supposed to close on a house. And I received a text from a couple coworkers asking if I'd heard from her. Had you heard from her? I had not. Did she ever discuss with you um, in the last week of June, that first day in July, any plans to go to her cabin? No. I love this. Methodically building their case, establishing, you know, a huge doubt to Chandler's um, explanation of things. Well, yeah, because, I mean... According to what we've heard now, they've told no one that we're going to the cabin except Chandler. And they're just introducing witness after witness to verify that fact. Exactly. What did you do in response to learning that Krista no called, no showed? Um, initially, we were just taking, uh, my girlfriend and I were taking care of some stuff around the house. I received a second text I think around 2.30 or so, um, of another uh, uh, co-worker asking if I had heard from her. Um, so around 4.35, 4.40 or so, we drove over to their house to see if I could get a hold of anyone. What caused you to drive over to her house? Um, just because it was weird for her to not show up to work, and I was uh, living just a couple miles away at the time. Okay. Uh, did you, in fact... Go, did you in fact go to her house? Yes. And just so we're clear, that's the house on Oak Spring Circle in Windsor, Wisconsin? Correct. What'd you do once you got there? Uh, initially knocked on the door, uh, no response. So I peered through the front door window, like the side light. Um, didn't really, s I saw what appeared to be a table on its side. Um, no response, so we went to the garage door, checked to see if the vehicles were there, which they were, and then at that point, uh, Chandler came to the door. Okay, um, and did you go into the house, talk outside, or something else? Uh, we talked outside of the side garage door. Okay, and just to be clear, I'm going to show you what has been marked and received as Exhibit 7. Is this the side garage door that you're discussing? Yes, that's correct. So Curtis probably wasn't overly concerned, but this guy was, because he probably knew it more it was out of character for her to do something like that. Yeah, especially not even Carl. Yeah. And interesting, he said that the table was on its side. Yeah, which means there was probably a struggle. Yeah, but, you know, Chandler didn't pick it up. You know, it's, this case becomes more mind-boggling the more we go into it, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So, tell me about your conversation with Chandler. What did he say? Uh, when we arrived, it appeared he had just gotten out of the shower. Um, I confirmed with him that his parents were not there. Um, and then he had given us a story about how uh, they had gone up north uh, in an emergency to the cabin and went with a couple that he was not sure who they were. Just know that they were picked up early that day and would be gone for a couple of days. Okay. Um, did he tell you what time his parents had left? Uh, 
I know he had said that it was um, probably right, but it was, he had not been waking up yet, so it was something early. He heard them leaving, is what he told me. And other than Chandler uh, just getting out of the shower, was there anything else unusual about his appearance? Uh, he had a bandage on his large toe. Um, not sh sure which side it was, but he had a bandage on one of his toes. Did he say anything about his foot? Uh, he said that he had broken the glass around the fireplace while playing with the dogs. Okay. Um, did he describe his injury at all? Uh, he just said there was blood everywhere. We found out, thanks to the lovely people in the comments, that Chandler wasn't anywhere near approaching high in his police interview. He was playing dumb uh, to fake a concussion injury. Uh -huh. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing, as well as well as the fact that you know he probably didn't he didn't have the concussion either, is the fact that um, his toe injury and I use the word injury in its broadest possible sense <laughs> was not at all severe at all. No. So he was faking everything from his internship with SpaceX to a bloody toe injury. Yeah, but why would he say there was blood everywhere? Because he's a sad twat, that's why. <laughs> After you spoke with Chandler, were you satisfied enough to that you left the house? Yes, I gave him, or we exchanged phone numbers um, so we could text and keep in contact. And I said to let him, or for him to let me know if he had heard anything from them. And then at that point, we felt the story made sense, so we left. Okay. And that's another thing. You can bet that he wasn't acting dumb and slow when he was talking to this guy, convincing him that his mum and dad had gone to the cabin. You can bet that he was as charismatic as hell. Yeah, and cool as a cucumber. Yeah, exactly. As a group, how would you identify exhibits or describe exhibits 32 through 34? Uh, let's see. Uh, so the initial 32 is when I gave my number to him. I texted him saying that it's me. Um, then followed up on Sunday, I had gotten a call from him that Sunday, which was a fourth. Uh, it was at a event down in South Beloit. Okay. Sorry. How would you describe them as a group just generally? Oh. Without going into detail as to what they are. Sorry. Um, let's see. So just following up, trying to figure out um, when they're expected to be back. Um, are these photographs of uh, text messages between you and Mr. Yes. Balderson? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. They're pictures of my phone. And do yes. they appear to be true and accurate depictions? Yes. At this time, I would move exhibits 34, 32 through 34 into evidence. Any objection? So may we approach? Sure. <laughs> He's just done that attorney's job for her, just basically describe what the text message is said. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Yeah. Giving your number correct, Chandler. Okay, and what's the next time um, during this week that you interact with Chandler? Chandler, I'll just see. So, it would have been Friday, I believe. Would you like to look at Exhibit 32 to yeah, refresh your memory? I believe we spoke that Saturday. Just trying to see if there was any update. And was there any update to your best of your knowledge? Um, I believe what we was told is that they um, 
you can't get a hold of them up north when there is cloud cover, so they're not able to receive or send texts if the weather is not clear. You're so full of shit. Okay, and I'm just giving you Exhibit 32 to help refresh yes. your recollection. Um, after maybe a phone call on a Saturday, when's the next time you had any interaction with Chandler Halderson? Uh, he called me Sunday afternoon um, when we were at the racetrack in Beloit, or okay, South so Beloit. What was the nature of the call, or why did he call you? Uh, he wanted to see what we were doing, um, said he was bored and wanted to hang out. Okay. Um, did you guys make plans? Uh, yeah, I told him that we were going to be at the racetrack, and when we got back, we would let him know. Um, and we were going to be um, out in the street with some of the other neighbors and doing Fourth of July things. I'm going to ask that you move your mic just oh, a little bit closer. Um, had you hung out with Chandler Halderson in the past? I'm sorry, but it's weird hearing like a disembodied voice off camera questioning him. He reminds me of Charlie Brown's teacher for some reason. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Not just him uh, with his parents and him, but not just him himself. Okay, but it wasn't unusual for you guys to get together? No. Okay. No. And I think the judge is going to ask everybody but the jury to remove their masks for a few seconds. Do you oh. see the person that you know as Chandra Halderson in the courtroom today? If everyone that's not in the jury could remove their masks so that the witness is able to see everyone's face fully and uh, determine whether he recognizes the defendant, please replace your masks at this time. Yes. Could you describe where he is seated and perhaps the color of his shirt? Uh, looks like a light purple, and it's a uh, third to the right. Ask the record to reflect the witness has identified the defendant? It shall. So does Mr. Halderson come over to your house on July 4th? Uh, yes, I believe shortly after 8.30. Okay. Uh, does he come alone? Does he bring someone or something? Uh, he brings his uh, girlfriend, Kat, which we were aware that she was coming. And what did you guys do? Uh, we did some fireworks in the street. And um, she, I believe she had a drink. Uh, my girlfriend and I had a couple of drinks and just kind of hung out in the driveway. To your knowledge, did anyone have any burn injuries from the interactions on July 4th? Not that I'm aware of. When's the next time that you interact with Chand Chandler Halderson? Oh, let's see. And I, I'm going to actually give you 33 and 34 as well. Yep. So it looks Three. like that would have been... Da -da 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 -da. That burn injuries question. It wouldn't have surprised me if Chandler had claimed some ill effects or something. Yeah, he's, he probably has. Like a flash frightened him or something and caused him mental episodes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or he's passing out now. Jesus. He, he, gives, he gives a whole new meaning to the term hypochondriac and Munchausen syndrome. It looks like it would have been Monday, uh, what would that have been, Monday the 5th? Okay, and what was the nature of that interaction? Uh, he was just saying that his family was going to be another day late and to ask if I could request another day off for her. Okay, and did you in fact communicate with your work? Yeah, I told my boss, Curtis. Okay. When, uh, any other interaction with Chandler that day? Uh, I don't believe so, no. On Tuesday, July 6th, did you have any communication with Chandler? Uh, yes, I was following up with him because she was supposed to have a doctor's appointment that day that she was really looking forward to um, and was expecting them to be back for sure for that event. Uh, so it looks like I texted uh, 9.23 that morning to have Krista call us as soon as they get back into town. And at the stage he's at now, 
possibly the worst outcomes are starting to enter his head because this is totally out of character for her, you know. Yeah, and especially missing a doctor's appointment. Yeah, which he said was important to her. It was an important appointment. Yeah, he said she was looking forward to it. Yeah, and have you noticed how this plus the Watts case, there was a doctor's appointment, you know, the day after? Exactly. And it's the doctor's appointment that kind of trips it up and makes, you know, puts a spanner in the works for the murderer, doesn't it? Well, yeah, because if you, you make an appointment at the doctor's, you first, in, you know, you expect to attend it. Yeah, especially in America where it costs you, you know, an arm and a leg, doesn't it? Exactly, so it don't make sense. Not at all. And why did he just take Chandler's word for it that Crystal wanted another day off? Um, yeah, that's the point. I mean, you know, he could have checked with Mitchell, but, you know, he probably did and Mitchell hadn't heard from them, so... Chandler was the last one that they spoke to. Yeah. So, you know... Chandler must have sold it to him somehow and kept the the pretense going. Yeah. And of course you didn't get a call from Krista. Correct. Describe your next interaction with Chandler. Uh, So I texted again Wednesday, uh, asking if they were back in town, uh, said that Krista was going to lose her job if she doesn't call in since it was a no call, no show. And what, if any, response did he give you? Uh, I say he's going to file a missing persons report if she misses her appointment. Okay, so I guess that was Tuesday then. I think that would have been more an idle threat to get her to get in touch rather than, you know, a, a serious threat to fire her. Although, it, you know, if it would have carried on, that would have been the inevitability, I think. Yeah, that does happen in workplaces. Yeah, so... Um, I don't think they would have fired her. They would have talked to her first and, you know... Found if she out had, yeah, why if, she didn't get in touch, why she was off. Exactly, yeah. Oh, and the other thing, do you remember the notes that Chandler showed... Yeah. Uh, uh, ..in Mum's handwriting? Well, it was actually written by his mum, um, but it was one... It was a note that was left weeks ago, a few weeks before, that he'd kept. <laughs> So we've been told that today by the lovely people in the comments. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, guys. <laughs> At this point, how worried are you on the spectrum for Krista? I was getting pretty worried because I knew um, I had texted her before when she was at her cabin. So I knew that story seemed about fishy. Um, and it was also really rare for her to not be excited about an event like that and to be telling everyone. (laughs) So we expected, you know, if they were planning to be off that she would have let us know, she would have let my boss Curtis know well in advance. Um, And it certainly wouldn't be like her to miss a doctor's appointment that she had been looking forward to. And just to clarify, because those are screenshots, yes. um, it does say, I believe, the July 2nd message on Exhibit 32 says the date. Uh, that, yeah. Or at least it says Friday. Friday, yep. Okay, which would have been the 2nd. Yep, and then Sunday. Sunday it has the date, and then it says, and then the next message is labeled yesterday. So that would have been, I believe these photos were taken on Wednesday. Okay. So yesterday would have been Tuesday the 6th. Oh, correct. And today would be Wednesday the 7th. Correct. I just want to go through the messages with you. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm publishing Exhibit 32. So the first one is This is Dan. Mm-hmm. Correct. The next message is Sunday. That would be July 4th, 7.33 p.m. Want to come over around 8.30. Is that you speaking? That is me, yes. And then, sounds good to me. Am I able to bring Pat, my girlfriend? And you respond, sure. Yes. All right. Then yesterday, which you said would be July 6th of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, They're late. Are you able to get her another day? Um, what time is that message? It, oh, it looks like that message was sent at 5.38 in the morning. Correct. Um, then 
yesterday, which was again the sixth, mm -hmm. it looks like you respond, I'll tell Curtis. Correct. Yep, that's when and I got it, to work. And again, as you said, you then also asked that Chris to call you as soon as you get set. Correct. That was after I spoke to Curtis. And moving on to Exhibit 33, and that says today, so that'd be Wednesday. Correct. Uh, are your you you say are your parents back in town? Krista's going to lose her job if she doesn't call. Correct. And Chandler responds, "I'm going to file a missing persons report. She misses her cancer." And also, this confirms that she did really have skin cancer. That was something that we were wondering, wasn't it? Yeah, if she did or didn't. Yeah. And with all this going on, with, with Dan's constant inquiries, you know, well, firstly, let's just go back a little bit. Do you remember when he told Dan that he was kind of lonely and he needed somebody to talk to? Yeah. Um, If someone said that to me, and then, you know, I said, yeah, come on over, um... And then he said, can I bring my girlfriend? I, I'd be like, well, you've got somebody to talk to. You know, if he was a relative stranger or... Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's got the best person to talk to, someone who understands him and someone who can help him through it. But I can kind of see, you know, maybe Dan kind of knew him but wasn't close to him. But, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason... Well, sometimes it kind of helps to talk to someone who's not in your immediate family. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But where we are now, when Dan is texting him, being, you know, pretty persistent, where is she? You know, tr trying to find out where she is. Chandler's now probably feeling the full weight and thinking, right, I've got to try and explain this away. Yeah, what can I say? Yeah. So the rest of this, he's basically flying by the seat of his ass, isn't he? I mean, you know, it's it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. He just blunders from one situation to another and he ends up getting arrested. Exactly. What a plonker. And then you respond, I'm trying to get a hold of Hildy. Who's Hildy? Uh, Mike Hilgendorf is a family friend of okay. theirs. I'm going to try to get a hold of Hildy. Do you know who they went to the cottage with? Have you talked to Mitchell? Has he heard anything? And Chandler responds, he hasn't. I called him last night. I don't know who they went with. And you respond, okay, I'll let you know if I hear from Hildy. Correct. She called me too earlier. I don't know if she knows. And you respond, who called you? Jane? Question mark. And would that be Jane Hildenorf? Yes, Mike's wife, yes. And Chandler responds, yes. So I'll go over to their friends' houses today and check. And that's exhibit 34. And you respond, okay. I wonder if this is the infamous Chandler Halderson ring doorbell tour 2021. Probably is. Sounds like Kilgee is going to go swing by the cab. He's two hours from there. And Chandler responds, yep, I got them the address and all. And you respond, okay, sounds good. Keep me posted. I'll do the same. And he responds, if she turns up for up to work, let me know too. And you respond, will do. Nothing yet. But did you call the police up there? And Chandler responded, no, I'm filing a, police, a report here so they can contact all the hospitals in James. Did I accurately read those messages from exhibits 32 through 34? I didn't see the very bottom wasn't on the screen of the uh, last one. Okay, sorry. Yes, correct. Dan, what was Chandler's demeanor or affect like when you discussed his missing parents? Uh, at the time, he didn't seem very concerned. Just they were up north and everything seemed like it was fine to him, was my understanding. No further questions. Cross-examination. Sir, in response to that last question about his demeanor, are you talking about or remembering talking to him in the driveway of the home? Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, the only thing that seemed off at that time uh, was when he said there was a lot of blood or there was blood everywhere. It was kind of, I felt kind of like he was looking through me, um, kind of like a glassy look. But other than that, everything seemed 
normal as far as how I knew Chandler. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Glassy-eyed stare looking through him. What was going on in Chandler's head in that moment? Do you think it was um, maybe disassociation or...? He could have been trying to distance himself or give um, Dan a... Yeah. But but don't forget, Chandler's also going to be thinking of an excuse. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Who knows? When the district attorney just asked you to recall Chandler's demeanor when he was talking to you, Mm. you were remembering that moment in the driveway, correct? Um, That driveway and in general, yeah. Everything seemed like, you know, they were just up north until um, she started to miss more days of work and then it seemed like there was more concern. Now, the person referenced as Hilgi. Yes. uh, That's Hilgendorf. Mike Hilgendorf, yes. Is that someone you know through the Haldersons, or did you know the Hilgendorfs before you knew the Haldersons? I we I worked with the Hilgendorfs, um, or with Mike anyway. He worked at the uh, Volkswagen news store, um, so I met him initially through Krista, but we had been at a few events together. And at that time, you didn't have his contact information. Correct. I emailed him through our work system. Well, it was work-related, strictly speaking. No other questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. May this witness be excused and released from his subpoena? He's excused. Uh, well, he's excused. All I right. guess we'd reserve the right to potentially All right. recall him. That means you can't discuss your testimony with anyone until you've been released on a future date. Thank you, sir, Understood. very much. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Just in between all of this, I love what Judge Highland's got going on with his hair. I mean, look at the little kiss curl, the Superman-style kiss curl he's got there. Yeah, he's probably a Superman fan. Possibly, yeah, but do you know who he kind of reminds me of with his hair and like the little kiss curl thing? Who? The judge in the Amber Heard case. I mean, she had kind of a similar thing going on. (laughs) I had a superhero vibe from her as well, and I'm getting the same thing from Judge Highland. State would call Zach Reed to the stand. Please raise your hand. You solemnly swear for the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Is it just me, or does she look like a younger version of Joe Dieris' answer? Yeah, she does a bit, actually. (laughs) Sir, if you can comfortably and safely uh, testify without your mask, uh, that would be uh, my request. Thank you. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. Could you please state and spell your name for the record? Uh, Zach Reed, Z-A-C-H. R-E-E-D. And how were you employed in July of 2021? Uh, I'm the HVAC salesman for then it was Landmark Heating and Cooling. Now it's Alcivia Heating and Cooling. And it's kind of an odd question, but what do you drive in the capacity of your work? (laughs) Uh, Ford Fusion. Okay. What color? White. Okay. And sometime prior to July 7th, 2021, was a work order put in to get a quote for some AC? Yes. And specifically for the Oak Springs Circle address? Correct. Okay, so what exactly were you supposed to do there? Uh, They were looking for a mini split unit, which is just a form of air conditioning for a house with a boiler. Okay, and on July 7th, of 2021, did you in fact go to the Oak Springs address in Windsor, Wisconsin? Yes. About what time did you arrive? Uh, I think around 11.45. Okay, and what time was your appointment, if you remember? Noon. 
Uh, did anybody greet you right away at 1145? No. Okay. At some point, did someone greet you on the property? Yes. Okay. Tell me about that. What time um, did that occur? I don't know exactly what time it was. I had knocked on the door. I was running a little ahead of schedule, knocked on the door, no answer. Went back in the car, um, started just doing some paperwork, and then uh, someone pulled up. So I just waved. They waved back, kind of got my stuff, my quote stuff ready to go, got out. He was out of the car at that point. Um, and then I said, introduced myself. Hey, here for a mini split quote. Um, he said, I don't know what that is. Told him, um, form of air conditioning for house with a boiler. Then he told me that he had just reported his parents missing. They didn't come back from up north. And I was like, oh, do you want to reschedule this? And, and do you know at this point who you're talking to? Uh, no. Uh, just it seems to be the child of yeah, the was, missing parents. In my mind at that point, it was just a kid who had reported his parents missing. Yep. Um, I don't know if you'll see that, this, that person in the courtroom. Do you think if you saw that person, you would recognize him? Yeah. Okay. At this point, I would ask everyone who's not in the jury box to please uh, remove their mask for the count of three. One, two, three. You can replace masks. Do you recognize the person you talked to in the courtroom today? Mm, and if I, you don't, that's okay. Don't know that I saw everybody. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, anyway, so the person maintained that they lived at the, the house that you had went to on Oak Springs? Yeah. Okay. As much slack as I want to cut Zach. Bloody hell, that rhymed. Um, hasn't he seen kind of courtroom TV film film stuff before and he kind of knows where the defence table is? He kind of could have known where to look, but, you know, it's pro probably daunting for him, isn't it? Yeah, and there's also, don't forget, he's on display. Yeah, that's true, so... Yeah, he's probably nervous as hell, and he probably didn't know where to look. So, yeah, I will cut Zach some slack. Bloody hell, that was a tongue twister as well. Um, what did you do next after the person told you that he just reported his parents missing? Um, asked him if he wanted to reschedule. He said, uh, no, it's got to get done. We started walking towards the house, and then the dog started to bark. And he kind of stopped and he said, oh, the dogs. And he was kind of just froze. And I was like, are you sure you don't want to reschedule? Got a lot of things going on. And he said, can we do that? And I was like, yeah, not a problem. And then that was it. How would you describe the demeanor of the person that you interacted that day in the driveway of the Oak Springs address? Um, kind of just stressed, I guess. Like he was hearing me, but not really processing what was going on. Okay. And did you notice anything else about the home that struck you as unusual or just noteworthy? Yeah, when I was standing at the front door before all of that, um, I just noticed it looked like the dryer vent came out of the front of the house and it looked like it had, someone had tried to maybe tape it shut or close it, which in our industry is could be weird depending on the type of dryer. Okay. Did you notice anything about any of the windows in the home? Yeah, all the windows were open. Okay. To get the smell out. Yeah. Can you imagine how what the smell must have been like in there after his, you know, midnight barbecues? Oh, God, it must have been absolutely disgusting. <sighs> Boggles the mind, doesn't it? It does. No other questions for this witness. Cross-examination. Yes, thank you. Um, the individual that you had an interaction with that day, was that your first time you had an interaction with him? Yep. And as far as the request to go to the home and see the, the unit or to talk about the unit, do you know who made that request? Uh, I believe it was Bart. And that individual that you spoke to was not, that individual you spoke to that day was not Bart. Was not what? Was not Bart, the person that made the request. Correct, yeah. Um, and when you... We're there, we're talking about July, correct? Yep. Yep. Was it hot that day? Um, yeah, I suppose. And was that your first time that you had gone to that location? Yes. So you don't know what that location or what the house looked like up until that day? Correct. No further questions. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. May this witness be excused and released? Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good remainder of your day. You too.
State calls Pam so said well to the stand. Said, well, if you believe you can do so responsibly and safely, it would be appreciated if you would testify without a mask. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Good afternoon. Could Hello. you please state your name and spell both your first and last name for the record? Legally, it's Pamela, but I go by Pam Sidwell, S I D W E L L. Ms. Sidwell, did you know a person by the name of Krista Halderson? I did. In what capacity did you know her? She was my neighbor. She was a coworker for three years at a seasonal employer in DeForest. Um, she was a walking buddy and she was a very good friend. Okay. So you live in the Oak Springs neighborhood? Yes. Did you know the rest of the family? Did you know Chandler, Chandler Halderson and Bart Halderson? I did. Okay. Um, again, as a neighbor? I, I knew Bart, you know, pretty well. We did things, both Bart and Krista and my husband and I did things together. I knew Chandler not so well. I knew of him. I, I saw him come into work once in a while. And he actually did a few odd jobs for my mother. Okay. Um, and towards the end of July, or I'm sorry, the end of June, beginning of July, did you become aware of a growing medical concern that Krista may have had for Chandler? She, both her and Bart stopped over at our place on I believe it was Sunday, the 27th. And um, they said he had fell down the steps and had a concussion and I said, did he go to the doctor? And she said yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Did Krista reach out to you any further about Chandler's concussion? Other than to, it was either Monday or Tuesday of that following week, she asked me if, she texted me and asked me if I'd be around because she was gonna be at work and Bart was gonna be at the dentist on Wednesday morning. And just in case he had any issues, <clears throat> that he could call. And that was Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. Right. Yes. So the doctor diagnosed Chandler with a mild concussion. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it was just Chandler and the doctor in the office. So Chandler could walk out of the office and tell his parents whatever he wanted. He could yeah. say, the, doc the doctor diagnosed me with a severe concussion this and that, I'm not allowed to fly, I'm not allowed this. Yeah, told me to grab a neck brace. When the doctor actually told him to grab a neck brace if he needed it. Yeah, that was only if. Yeah. So it was the perfect opportunity for him to embellish this bullshit concussion story further, wasn't it? Of course it was. And it would be nice if, you know... If his parents knew that it was a mild concussion, it would be nice if they could find out. But obviously, he's over 21. His medical records are private. Yeah, and pa patient doctor confidentiality. Yeah. It probably would have saved their lives knowing that, you know, just how, well, unsevere, if you like, his concussion was. And what did you answer, Chris? I said, sure. Um... previously marked and displayed to the jury as Exhibit 35. This is a note. Um, I see the name Pam on the note and a phone number. 
Is that in fact your phone number or your phone number as it was in June of 2021? No. My phone number is 7036. So it's one digit off. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But otherwise that information appears accurate. Right. Okay. Um, does your husband have the number one or two digits off of yours? No, we actually have the same house address, so both cell phone numbers end in 7036, and our home number is 7036. But Krista giving you a heads up about the 30th that Chandler was going to be by himself. Yes. Yeah, you were kind of on call. Yes. At any point in time, on the 30th, any time before, after, did Krista reach out to you and ask you to, hey, be available during the July 4th weekend for Chandler? No. Did Krista ever talk to you about plans to go to the cabin over the July 4th weekend? No. And I'm going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 36. And I'm going to turn specifically to page 3579. <laughs> And the last text on there, is that the text that Krista sent you? I don't have my reading glasses. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, hi, would it be okay to give your telephone number to Chandler tomorrow as a backup in case of an emergency? Does that appear to be accurate, mm -hmm. what I read? Yes. And. Does it so sound right that that was sent um, on June 29th of tw 2021 at 9.26 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. If Krista would have went to the cabin, would it be unlike her to not have somebody check in on Chandler considering his medical condition? Your Honor, concern or was going to be out of town to try to let her friends and family know? Yes. And that was part of how it for Yes. I'm going to move Exhibit 36 into evidence, but not publish it at this time. Any objection? No objection. It is received. Yes, we're missing. No. Okay, looks like we're experiencing some jumps in this video. Uh, not sure how much we've missed. Yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah, apologies. No further questions. Cross-examination. No, thank you. May this witness be excused and released? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have thank a good you. remainder of your day. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Where's my sheet? pretty sure there's only one camera in this courtroom yeah um with the jody trial i think there was two or three there was at least two so um yeah just gotta put one camera haven't we well it's one camera's better than none yeah that's true while miss Reming's preparing <clears throat> the state calls detective bill hendrickson of the dane county sheriff's department thank you Detective, if you're comfortable and believe you can do so safely and responsibly testifying without your mask would be appreciated. Okay, thank you. Could you please state your name and spell your first and last name for the record? It's William A. Hendrickson, H-E-N-D-R-I-C-K-S-O-N. How are you employed? I'm a detective with the Dane County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been employed as a detective? Uh, I've been with the county for 27 years. I've been a detective for 20 of those. He actually looks like he could be a detective, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got that uh, look about him. Yeah. Could do with being a bit more rumpled, but yeah, <laughs> definitely. And before that, you were a deputy? Correct. Um, is it fair to say that you did a variety of different tasks in regard to this investigation? Yes. And in fact, we're probably going to hear from you multiple times, telling different parts of the story. I believe so, yes. So 
at one point in the investigation, um, did detectives search for proof of life for Barton? Yes. What does that mean? It's basically looking for the last known date or time that we know that the victims were alive and well, going about their daily routine, doing things that people would normally do in their life. I'm going to show you some exhibits. Exhibit 37, 38, and 39. First exhibit 37. How would you describe exhibit 37? Uh, 37 is a copy of financial records for uh, Chandler Halderson and Bart Halderson from Settlers Bank in Windsor, Wisconsin. And why would you get bank records for a missing persons case? Uh, trying to find out if they have been accessing their accounts, um, making purchases, if they're making purchases in the area or possibly somewhere else, and attempt to locate them. And does that appear to be true and accurate records as you got them? From Bank. Okay, so he said that they were um, records, bank records for Chandler and Bart. No mention of Krista. Not yet, but maybe that'll come. I think Chandler's were looked at because he was the chief person of suspicion. So That's probably why they obtained him. Yeah, both of them. Yes, it does. I would move exhibit 37 into evidence at this time. Any objection? No objection. They are received. And detective, I would ask to draw your attention to some of the last purchases or last accountings here for Bart and Bart Holders. Were any purchases made on July 1st of 2021? Uh, yes. And what were those purchases? It was a purchase at the uh, Quick Trip store. It says Quick Trip Madison. And how much was that one for? Uh, $2.62 it looks like. Okay. And what else? Uh, there was also one, it looks like it was uh, some sort of a prepayment with maybe UW Health in the amount of $30. Okay. And were there any transactions that popped up on July 2nd? Uh, yes, there was a purchase at Qdoba, which is the East Madison location in front of East Town Mall, and that was the only one on that day. And you work with bank records during the course of your work as a detective? Yes, I do. Do purchases always pop up on bank records the day that you make them? Uh, with some companies they do, with other companies it could be anywhere between 24 and 72 hours before it shows up on a bank statement. So this was an interesting purchase because it occurred on July 2nd of 2021, or at least it appeared so from the bank record. That's correct, yes. So did you do any investigating to see when this purchase was actually made? I did. I would ask that you describe exhibits 38 and 39, please. Okay, 38 is a, a photo that I took um, from inside the Qdoba this would have been like a screenshot taken from video surveillance footage, which shows uh, who I believe to be Barton, Krista Halderson, on the date this purchase was made. Uh, exhibit 39 is a copy of the receipt regarding the purchase that was made um, that corresponds to this video footage. And do the, does exhibit 38 and 39 appear to be true and accurate depictions? They do, yes. I would move exhibits 38 and 39 into evidence at this time. No objection. They are received. Exhibit 39 first. In fact, the screen in front of you should hopefully. So, the amount looking at the bank records, the amount of the purchase at Udoba that popped up for July 2nd, what was that amount? It was $26.43. And you were able to track that amount to this receipt. What is the date on the receipt on Exhibit 39? Uh, the name of the receipt is a June 30th, 2021 at 6.02 p.m. June 30th. Correct. So it's a 48 hours roughly. Essentially, yes. And then I'm going to publish Exhibit 38. And is this the still from the surveillance video from the Qdoba location? It is. So in 
even though that bank record showed that there was activity on July 2nd, that activity actually took place on June 30th. In this instance, in regards to Qdoba, yes. Was there any other, other than what appeared to be prepayments, some people pay their bills automatically, were there any other purchases that were of interest? There's a number of transactions that took place after the second um, at Target, and then there was looks like some probably payroll deposits that went through um, before the uh, second, and then after the second. Okay. It looks like another p payment, like an automatic payment to like TDS. Uh, okay, so some, some automatic payment. things that were correct that appeared to be yes. Um, did you find any evidence at all that Krista or Bart Halderson purchased anything? after July 1st of 2021. I did not. It's a long trip up to that cabin, so they would have stopped for refreshments or to buy, you know, some some drinks, some snacks on the way from like a 7-Eleven or a petrol station or something. Yeah, I mean, everyone does that. Yeah. So... This is where his story, once again, falls flat on its face. No financial transactions. No evidence. Council, can I ask a clarifying question? Is Exhibit 37 the records of an account belonging to Krista and Bart? Because I thought I heard you say Chandler and Bart. It is Krista and All right. Bart. Right, I did wonder, you know, it was unusual why they'd subpoena Chandler's, but, you know, my original logic still stands. You know, they would have, probably would have looked at his bank records as he's a person of suspicion, but... You know, yeah, he did mean Bart and Krista, because yeah. we, did, we did talk about that off camera, didn't we? We did, yeah. Wondering what? Um, I, I actually believe that there's more than one bank record here, and there is an account that also is Chandler and Bart. All right, thank you. And Madam Clerk, did I move Exhibit 37 into evidence? Thank you. No further questions. Uh, Cross-examination? No, thank you. Uh, at this time, may the witness be excused but not released? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Detective. Thank you. He might be one of a few Detective Flores's equivalents on this case, you know, detectives that keep being called to testify. Yeah, with certain parts of the case. Yeah, like Flores was in the Arias case. So, yeah, I don't think this is the last time we'll see him. No, we'll see him again. Your Honor, could we approach it this time? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's good. Folks, the, um, the state believes that we're at a good point to break for the day um, because the next um, uh, evidentiary issues that would be uh, brought to your attention could take us past 5 o'clock. And since this was the first day, and everybody's now, I hope, figured out how this will work and the amount of time it takes and so forth, and, and we've probably less, uh, had probably a less restful night last night than you would have were it not for knowing you'd be here today. Um, it's a good point for us to break. Um, I will not see you again until tomorrow at 8.45 when I would like to begin. I appreciate everything today that you did as far as your timeliness. Um, we were delayed, which delayed you, but we're gonna press to not have that occur. I remind you again, after you leave the building here, don't discuss this with anyone in your home, anyone that you meet, anyone um, in your circle of friends or family. Uh, don't take any steps to research or uh, learn of anything. Avoid the news. Um, although I, I, I can tell you one thing. Uh, the the um, order that I instituted as far as media does cover only what occurs in the courtroom so that what anybody who's watching is seeing is what you're seeing. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean you should discuss what they've seen with them or that they should try and discuss that with you, let alone you're revisiting that by 
searching out any of those uh, media outlets that might be able to replay or show you what's gone on. What you need to do is leave here, leave this matter out of your mind, relax, have a good restful evening, and not allow yourself to, uh, to come into contact with anything that would uh, violate the need for you to stay um, only focused on what you hear and only exposed to what you hear in this room. The longer we get into this trial and the more he talks, the more I like this judge. Yeah, he seems really laid back. Yeah, he's, he's verbose. He's very verbose. He's a man after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, he he seems quite... Trust he's like the grandfatherly type almost, isn't he? Yeah, he's got that kind of look about him. Yeah. That feel. And he definitely personifies an authority figure you can trust, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. So have a very good evening. If you can be here ready to go by 8.45, we'll be here before that and get things taken care of so that we can get a good start on tomorrow. And again, if you need to bring lunch, do. Um, I don't know uh, how easy it is for you to get out and get something, and I think it's getting colder, so be cautious there. Thank you very much. I'd rather bring my own lunch in than eat a bloody plate of green beans every day.